Hi there, my name is Greg, and in this video I'll be answering your important Twitter questions. Now if you're wondering what I'm talking about, it's probably because you're not following me on Twitter. That tends to be where I'm the most active on social media. We also have a public Discord server, though I'm not as active there because we do have a very, actually, very good community uh, full of very knowledgeable people who can help you out if you have tech problems, if you have issues with your computer, maybe you want to ask questions about performance and the like, that's where you go for those quick answers. And then we also have Facebook DMs open on our Facebook page. A couple, I mean, Instagram, you know, things like that, but I'm really the most active on Twitter, and that's why I decided to ask folks to send their questions there. So if you're not following me, go ahead and do that. Just a side note, I am more or less a one-man operation, so if you're wondering why I'm not as active on Discord or why I don't re respond to Facebook DMs or whatever, uh, it's because I just don't have the time. I manage filming, editing, scripting. I do all of that by myself. No one helps me. Uh, my wife does handle some of the emails. She handles user submissions for the PCDC and Fixer Flop playlist specifically, and then we also have a brand manager that handles the bigger brand negotiations and things, but uh, I'm in charge of pretty much everything else, and I can yeah be spread thin. But without further ado, we're gonna jump into these questions. They are juicy. I hope you enjoy. Stay with me. To get rid of that annoying activation watermark, hop on over to VIP SCD key and purchase a Windows 10 Pro OEM key for fractions of the price of retail. Just use a secure payment method like PayPal, receive your key in seconds, and activate your OS here. Bye bye watermark. And be sure to use our new offer code SKGS for a sweet discount. So we're gonna jump straight into the questions. If you asked a question, it will be featured on the channel. That's my that's my goal. I know that once we get to like two or 300 questions submitted on Twitter, it's gonna be near impossible to condense all that into a single video. But uh, while we can, I'm gonna to try to show every single one of these on video uh, so that you feel like I'm more or less talking to you face to face. I don't really get much of that interaction anymore. When we were a lot smaller, it was easier to do that, but now it's becoming increasingly difficult. Uh, so I'm just gonna scroll through, read the question aloud, and then try to briefly answer it. So starting first with the BS machine, I'm looking for a hard to find Be Quite Official Dark Base 700 in white specialty edition. What are the best places to find this stuff? Is it just Facebook Marketplace and eBay? The answer is more than likely yes. They only made two or 3,000 of these cases and they're not being sold by Be Quiet Direct anymore, I don't believe. So you're gonna have to just find one secondhand. Good luck with that. There aren't uh, aren't too many out there. Uh, Nick asks, if a case can only support a single 120 mil radiator, is building a custom loop with the time uh, worth, I think you meant, worth the time and money, even if it's a thick 45 mil or more uh, radiator being used. Great question, Nick. So I think the entire premise personally behind custom loops or the custom loop market for PCs that are in the mid tower format, um, I, I think that it's purely an aesthetic player, at least that's how it should be approached. And the reason why is because you're not gonna see a huge performance difference in terms of thermals between a 360 mil AIO and a custom loop that only uses a single 360 mil radiator, right? I mean, there's, that's essentially the same cooling space from the radiator side of things. And you've just got a stronger D5 pump or DDC pump, whatever it might be over, usually it's an ACE attack pump in the AIO. It's not until you throw in crazy radiator combinations like dual 480 mil and above, um, right? That's when you've got enough fans working simultaneously uh, to the point where they don't have to turn very fast. And when they don't turn very fast, you get a quieter system under that load, and you might have an additional, you know, two, 300 megahertz worth of overclocking headroom there. Uh, but if you're going for like extreme, extreme overclocking, custom loops aren't the way to go. You wanna go, you know, liquid nitrogen, things like that, things that are temporary. But uh, if that's what you want, like a Hall of Fame attempt or something like that in, in 3D Mark, you don't wanna go with a custom loop. Um, the, the, the major selling point, I think, is just the aesthetic play. And that's coming from somebody who's built many of them. I've worked with many custom loop companies. I think they would even attest to that. Yes, there are some minor cooling benefits if you're just sticking with a 360 mil or maybe a 360 mil plus a 240, something like that. You're gonna get an extra, you know, maybe three, four degrees Celsius out of it, but it's not gonna be anything super crazy unless you jack up all your fan curves to 100%. At that point, I think you've kind of defeated the purpose of the custom loop to begin with. That's just my take on it. Next up we have Drake. I have an Aorus X570 Elite motherboard. It says it can run the two sticks of 3600 megahertz RAM, but it won't allow me to enable XMP. So I'm stuck running the RAM at stock. I've tried updating the mo motherboard and my research has shown me others have the same problem. Any ideas? Uh, yeah, I've, if others are having the same problem, then it's definitely a motherboard issue. If you've seen this issue replicated by other users with 
different boards, but same model, right? Same SKU. Uh, it's gonna come down to probably a BIOS update. And if it's not out yet, it's something that I expect Gigabyte is working on right now. Next up, we've Braylon Black. Favorite piece of tech? Ooh, these questions are so vague and that's why they're so difficult to answer. Honestly, it's it's probably gonna be like my, one of my cameras. I just use a, a 64 and a 6600s. I don't use the, the larger uh, full frame mirrorless cameras. I'm a Sony fan, but I, I don't like the, the price of the a7S III at this point in time. I'm more or less waiting for the a7 IV uh, and whatever that brings to the table. Probably much of what's in the a7S III. I just don't want to pay the price of the a7S III. Um, but my a6600 is really great. Excellent autofocus. I've got three lenses that I pair uh, with it to film the videos that you guys see on the channel and it's just lovely. Uh, all of my filming gear for the most part is in my video descriptions by the way. Nanoflower asks, why do we exist? Oof, another tough question. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hit you back with another question. How do you know we exist and that we're not in a simulation? Matt asks, how long is your prep routine just for your hair when filming? Well, this is a good question. It's literally this right here. And usually it just kind of stays like that. Osama asked, if you were to change three things about the USA, what would they be and why? Oh my gosh, with the tough questions, off the top of my head, I'll just answer one of those. I think that healthcare in this country really needs to change. We're in this weird middle ground between like being fully socialized and fully private. Like the government's kind of got a say in what happens, but at the same time, the, the private institutions are still more or less in control of things. So the, the rates are really high. Man. They're, just, they're just really high. At this point, I feel like it can't get much worse in either direction. So <laughs> we just need to pick one and stick with it. Um, I, I, at this point, I just, yeah, I'm, I'm paying as much for healthcare for my family of three, my wife and my kid and myself. I'm paying as much for that as I am for my mortgage. And, and this is a pretty decent sized house. It's like a 3000 square foot home. It's a, it's kind of a cookie cutter, cheaper style, 3000 square foot home, but still. So picture that a mortgage from that house. That's about what I pay in healthcare. And it's insane. Okay, Mr. PC Deep Cleaner, no cheating. Show us right now how clean your daily use PC is. Aha, got you, Matt. I actually just built this system. You probably have already seen the NZXT build that we published maybe a few days or weeks ago, depending on when I published this one. But uh, yeah, I just built it, so it's fresh, it's clean. Now my old build, you could probably see in that video, it's a little dusty, not too bad though. Uh, and it's just because my office gets so dirty from cleaning those other viewer systems that are really messy that, uh, yeah, I mean, I can only keep dust out for so long. If not YouTube, which alternative career path would you have gone for? Good question. So I actually have a petroleum engineering degree and that was something I expected I'd be using for the remainder of my life. Little did I know it would mean almost nothing. I mean, I, I did learn quite a bit from it and I did learn some basic circuitry and things in the core engineering classes that I had to take, but uh, I'd be offshore probably drilling for oil right now. And I know there's a bunch of people think, oh, oil, that's, a, that's bad. Uh, but look, a lot of things still rely on petroleum. Uh, a lot of plastics and uh, other chemicals that we use in everyday things. Uh, so it, it's not something that's disappearing. Actually, we're finding more reserves than we're depleting every year. At least that's been the track for a good while. There's this notion that we're running out of oil, but that's just simply not the case. I don't know why the media says that. Most of them don't understand how reservoirs work, how they're found, or how they're maintained. But anyway, yeah, that's what I'd be doing. I'd probably be offshore right now because that's ten, that tends to be where you can make the most money is working offshore. And uh, I don't know if I'd be on the drilling side or the production side or what, but I'd like to be hands-on if possible. Next up, we have Colin says, what are the mistakes that uh, accessory manufacturer are making? What are the mistakes that accessory, what? By that I mean, should the industry focus on interoperability? Reducing the bloatware of RGB controls, not adding diffusers to RGB, not enough catering to the silent PC crowd. Um, look, I think that a lot of these companies just kind of follow the money and they should if they're if they're interested in making money, which again, all companies for the most part are, um, they're just going to be doing things that are widely accepted by the most number of people. It's utilitarianism and most people like RGB. That's just how it is. Uh, the... I mean, RGB control is like RGB software. Yeah, it's all pretty much finicky. Um, there are some RGB suites that attempt to unify uh, all the different sorts of brands because it can be annoying to have like three or four different RGB software suites on your desktop and have them all open and run in the background simultaneously. We've we've run pre-rolls for Signal RGB in the past. They attempt to unify those, but they don't, they don't have support for everyone yet, right? They're having to add support as they go. And I think until... All support for all products is 
attained, which I think is impossible, we're just going to be dealing with that. Where like every company attempts to make it work and there's always going to be issues. And when you have multiple RGB software suites running in the background simultaneously, you're going to have conflicts and some devices aren't going to be detected. And it's just a cluster, right? On the software side, it's just a cluster to maintain. Uh, and then not enough catering to the silent PC crowd. I certainly think there are products out there that already do that. Um, just because some companies don't doesn't mean that no company does, right? If your favorite manufacturer is just not known for their silent PC components, you know, tough noodle. That's just what they, that's what they choose to do. They choose to cater to a different crowd, probably a crowd that's a little more, you know, a little more populous, maybe a bit louder than the silent PC crowd, no pun intended. Um, but you've got Noctua, you've got Be Quiet, a lot of those companies that do specialize in silent PC products and these other companies know that they already exist and that they're already well established. Are they interested in competing with them? Probably not. They're good at what they do. Let them continue doing it, right? So if you want quiet stuff, it's already out there. Next one, Miguel says, why do some people distrust the COVID vaccine that is scientifically proven to be effective and safe, but happily take cattle medicine because it's cattle medicine because some YouTubers said it works. <laughs> uh, look, I'm not going to get into this because it's going to get too... I don't know. I'm going to piss somebody off. No matter what I say, somebody's going to be upset by what I said. Uh, I will just say that I'm... I'm disappointed in how politicized the vaccine has become. Up next, Steve asks, what are your early thoughts on Intel adopting a big little design for their next desktop chips? I don't see the advantage of it since power efficiency is such a low priority for desktop machines. So what Steve's referring to, Intel Alder Lake CPUs are apparently gonna have a big little design in the sense that they're gonna have some powerful, larger CPU cores in the package and then some smaller, more efficient cores. And the bigger cores are the more powerful ones. They they run at higher frequencies, et cetera. They consume more power. Uh, and then the more efficient cores are the ones that are gonna be, yeah, sipping on power, more for background tasks and the like. I haven't done a ton of research into this, but I think it's it's really going to affect um, only a certain group of people. I think you, you gotta know going into this that Alder Lake is going to benefit some folks, a lot of gamers. They're gonna be happy with the purported lower temperatures, lower power draw, uh, but then, you know, other workloads aren't going to favor that. So if you're leveraging a program that has max core utilization, we've got some cores that are going to be lagging behind because they're just not operating at a higher frequency. They have much lower power thresholds. So there you go. Next up, Ghost. Why do you think Microsoft chose now during a global chip shortage to release an operating system requiring the very hardware that is in short supply? They must know people will wait and that only hurts Microsoft's ROI and market share. You know, I don't actually know. That's a good point. I didn't think about the timing there. Um, I think it's ridiculous that there are hardware requirements for stuff. If, if the point of an operating system is for it to be very fluid, very steady, and and universal, or as universal as possible, why would you alienate such a large number of people? I think that Windows 10 is already good enough. I personally won't be upgrading to Windows 11 anytime soon unless I absolutely must. And even then, it might just be for experimental purposes. Uh, I, I'm, I'm fine with Windows 10. Like, yeah, it could be a lot better, but... It works for me, and I'm not someone that just readily jumps onto the bandwagon of, oh, it's new, so it must be better, because <laughs> we've all been through Windows 8. Next up here, George, would you mind if I interviewed for a video about your channel? Uh, yeah, sure, I can do an interview. Uh, it doesn't matter what size channel you have. I don't know who this person is, but uh, I, I'll do them. I have no problem with that, and, and it's kind of a quid pro quo. It helps out your channel, helps out my channel, my exposure, so I'm down for them. I'm just, I'm pretty busy at this point. I think toward the end of the year, it's gonna get worse. So we might need to move this to January, February, somewhere around then when it's a bit quieter in the tech space and uh, we can work something out. Next up, or ZZ, if you had to choose between starting over on YouTube but forgetting everything you knew about the internet or never going onto the internet ever again, which would you choose? <laughs> what, what kind of what if question is this? I don't really have a problem with starting over. I mean, that, that part doesn't really scare me. It's the forgetting everything part. What I know now, I know that if I wanted to do this again, I probably could and I could probably pull it off. It probably wouldn't be as successful now because there are certainly more creators on the platform than there ever have been. But I think that the idea that I have to forget everything in the process, I don't like that. I don't want to... I don't want to give up what I've learned. So I guess I'm never going on the internet again. Thanks, Or. Uh, next one, I see, or however you say your name, I apologize. What's your last name history? Do you come from a Latin family? Do you speak Spanish? A uh, good question. I get this a lot. So uh, Salazar is a Spanish name. I think I, I, we've traced our family back to like Northern Spain, like Castile area, somewhere around there. But uh, I don't speak Spanish. I wish I did. My wife speaks like five languages and I speak one point 
two languages, 1.1, 1. 1, like very, very broken German, very, very broken Spanish. I wish I spoke more. Uh, it just, I just need to take the time to do it. And I've been so slammed with work the past few years, plus having a kid and getting married. All this is just happening very quickly. And time just seems to elude me. So <laughs> maybe, maybe at some point I will, yeah, try again to learn the language. Next one here from Glaucoma, is that new RGB service being promoted everywhere legit or is it actually a scam of some sort? I have no idea what you're talking about. I wish you'd specified the software if you're referring to software, I don't know. The one we advertised, uh, if that's what you're talking about, Signal RGB is legit. If it was a scam or we suspected it was a scam, we would not be promoting it. We've got Kryptonic HD with the PC market being so rough, would you recommend someone get something like an Xbox Series S over a low-end PC that can't perform as well? Let's say $300, Game Pass makes a Series S an interesting deal. A uh, good question, I would say, yeah. Um, if, if you can't really swallow the pill of paying a bit more than normal for a graphics card, and all you really wanna do is game, you're not worried about having like a unified gaming machine plus office work, etc. cetera, uh, then yeah, a console is certainly viable and there's a reason why they are so popular. Next up, we have Greg Morgan. If I buy a video card with DisplayPort 1.4 or higher, will my DP 1.2 cables work with it? Uh, more than likely not. I'm not sure what the limitations are with a DisplayPort 1.2 cable, but I know the bandwidth definitely changes between the two. So depending on the display resolution refresh rate, your DP 1.2 cable might not be enough. It comes down to like the gauge of the wire that the cable uses, how it's wound up, things like that. Because again, the bandwidth jump is just massive. Next up, the bald guy, what was your first job? So kind of a two-parter here. My first legit job, as in like I worked a nine to five shift, things like that, it was very steady. I worked in the summers at a local Winn-Dixie. I was a meat and seafood associate. So back there I was like cutting fish, cutting meat for folks. Um, making all kinds of stuff back there and then cleaning it all up. And I did that every single day over and over and over again. And um, I don't know, it got kind of old. Now, the second part of this question, the first job I had where I was paid by somebody other than my parents, I was a soccer referee. I refed uh, kids games. I was at the time like, you know, 15, 16, 17. And I was also refing adult league games as well. So people who are much older than me, I like think I was pretty fair. Next up we have James. I would love to hear you reminisce on your first computer experience. Mine was the old Apple IIe. Yeah, I'm that old. So my first modern build, and I did take apart and rebuild a lot of computers my dad would bring home when I was much younger, like 10, 11 years old. But uh, my first personal gaming PC that I ever built, I was in college and I built it with a Core i3 4150, a GTX 750 Ti, and a Z97 motherboard because I had big hopes and dreams. And I thought that one day I was gonna be upgrading that i3 to something that I could actually overclock like a Core i5 uh, KSQ or a Core i7. That really didn't happen. I ended up selling that rig and made like 50 bucks. I think it cost me like $500 to build and I sold it for 550. So then I took that money and bought a totally different platform, different system. And that's kind of how I got acquainted with different hardware. I would try different combinations of hardware with different budgets. And uh, yeah, that's how the PC channel was born. Next up, what was the first Breaking Benjamin song you ever heard? Oh, I love this. So for those who don't know, Breaking Benjamin's my favorite band. The first song I ever heard from them I can't remember how old I was, but it was right after the Phobia album came out. I think the first song I heard was Evil Angel. I heard that little drum intro, and then I just heard just the, the grungy, you know, electric guitar come in. I was like, oh yes, this is it. Next up, question from Elias, I think. Who is the driver in F1 you like the most? It has to be Fernando Alonso. Yes, he's Spanish, so duh, but he's also a very driven character, no pun intended. He's very talented. He's a bit headstrong, but I mean, the dude is just super, super talented. I remember when he won his first championships, 05 and 06 for Renault, dethroning Michael Schumacher. Finally, someone was able to do it. Um, yeah, he had a few <laughs> shoddy experiences with McLaren and Ferrari. I remember the Ferrari that was famous for understeering and oversteering. Oh my gosh. And he still managed to not crash as much as most people probably would have in that car. He's um he's just one of the greats, I think. And despite only winning two world titles, that's still two more than most people on the grid. Next up, we've Richard. Which math and or physics classes cause you the most sleepless nights? This is an easy one. Got to be differential equations. And it's not necessarily because diff EQ is difficult. It is kind of difficult to wrap your head around diff EQ. It's not as straightforward, I think, as calculus one or calculus two. Um, diff EQ is just like, it's an extra layer on top of so many numbers and letters that, um, yeah, it was a bit overwhelming, but I think what overwhelmed me the most was the professor. The professor, in my view, wasn't very good, point blank. Um, it, just, it just wasn't very good. And so I resorted to 
YouTube channels, actually, like Patrick JMT. I'm sure he's still around. I haven't checked recently, but uh, Patrick JMT was a lifesaver in DiffEQ. If it was not for him, I would have failed it, hands down. And yes, in hindsight, I probably would have blamed the professor, but when you're a student, it's, it's really no excuse. At this point, there is so much knowledge at your disposal online that even if your professor is trash, unless he's like intentionally screwing you over on tests, which he can't really do if you're getting the questions correct and showing the correct work, there's really no excuse to fail. If you're driven enough, you'll find a way to learn. Even if you have to do it on your own with a textbook or with online help from YouTube or elsewhere, you can pull it off. If I can, you can. Next up, Jay Peterson, when building or upgrading a PC, what's the biggest mistake you think people often make and what are the alternative option solutions you would suggest? Uh, this one's pretty straightforward. I think that wiring, especially like front IO wiring, things like that, uh, the more precise details of PC building are probably what people misinterpret the most. Uh, installing things like AIOs, using the wrong screws, um, you know, the finer details. Um, those are often what are overlooked. And unfortunately, this can result in some pretty catastrophic experiences, CPUs overheating, systems not powering on because things are miswired. And the alternative options or solutions to those would be to do a bit more research. Watch YouTube videos like ours. We have plenty of those out there that should help you. Next up, uh, EVGA GeForce 210. <laughs> <laughs> this is the weird Twitter name. What are some of the oldest PC parts that you have and what do you think is the best use for such parts? That's kind of a tough one. I like to just have them just to show them off at some point. I'm sure my kids will get a kick out of the way graphics cards used to look in the good old days. But uh, I, I just, I don't know. You could recycle them. There are responsible ways to dispose of them if that's something you're into. But I think that even the older components have some use case for certain individuals, especially those who can't really afford much at all. Um, young kids who have never been exposed to super powerful systems, I'm sure would be perfectly happy with those older components. And I think that's what I'm gonna start my kid out with. I'm gonna give him a very bare bones system and he's gonna have to learn and work his way up to the more powerful stuff. Just because he's my son doesn't mean he's gonna get the biggest and the best right away. The goal is not to spoil your kids early. Next up, uh, okay, more serious question from Kirk. If Peter Piper peaked at part picker to pee, I okay, I'm <laughs> moving on. Uh, Stu Stuby, is that how you say your name? Why do fools fall in love? Good question, uh, and I don't have the answer to that, unfortunately. Don T, I have a good one. It's today's time using a Ryzen 5800X. Is 3600 megahertz considered slow now for RAM? I've heard other YouTubers stating 4000 megahertz is the new standard. Uh, look, I think that's opinionated, um, definitely. I mean, 4000 megahertz of RAM, that's still gonna depend on timings and cast latency and things. But uh, assuming they scale equivalently, yes, there are benefits to having faster memory, but around 3600 megahertz is usually where you're gonna start to see the law of diminishing returns really start to take hold. So unless you can find a 4,000 megahertz kit for around the same price as a 3,600 megahertz kit, which in today's market is not really possible, you'll be paying a pretty premium for a 4,000 megahertz kit in most cases. Um, the 3600 megahertz kit is just fine and probably the better value option. Next up, Patty's PC is how do you think Microsoft have handled the release of Windows 7 so far? This kind of ties into the one we just answered. I, I just, I. I don't know. I don't think they're going to be able to break the cycle. Honestly, I think Windows 11 is going to be pretty buggy for a pretty long time. And you know it's bad when they're already starting to, you know, narrow down the, the kinds of hardware that uh, will work with it. I'm just not interested at this point in trying it out myself. Uh, Pulsive, what inspired you to learn how to build PCs? Was it hard to master this field? Uh, not at all, actually. I mean, I, I know it's easy for us on this side of the fence to, to say that it's easy because we've been doing it for so long, but... It really wasn't all that difficult. I was a bit nervous, yes, but it was fairly straightforward. The wiring for the most part is straightforward. Watch a YouTube video or two, that's what they're there for. Um, with this much information at our fingertips nowadays, there's really no excuse for not building one if you have the time. And to answer the other part of your question, I built my first PC because I had to. My rendering times were way too long when I was in college uh, making the early videos I was making on the YouTube channel. Uh, this next one, I don't even get this reference. I might be uncultured, but uh, I've never seen this before. Next one from Extra Large Potato. How much collateral would I have to let you hold to borrow a GP for build my car, my first part? That's uh, pretty good. Uh, what do you have here? Al Alpha, Alpharius, however you say that. Have you tried extreme overclocking or would you consider it if you haven't before? Uh, I wouldn't do it out of my own, like I wouldn't take up my own time to do it. It's just not something that I think is, there's not really a point to it unless you're just trying to put your name on a scoreboard. And I get that appeal, right? But uh, yeah, I know unless I'm in the right setting, it's just not really worth it. I, I don't think that there's much you know, point to it. Tom asks, yes or no? 
go with no. K asks, when do you plan on adopting Windows 11 for your builds? The same question, uh, not anytime soon. Just, yeah, I would prefer to stick with what works and I'll let everyone sort out through the beta phase or what should be called the beta phase. What do you think about RGB and what's the best way to control a whole setup with multiple periphery hardware? Again, uh, we've talked about this a bit. Signal RGB is one of those that's upcoming. They're adding support every day, but they still haven't added a ton yet, I would say. Uh, so they're getting there, but at this point, there's really no solid solution. There's a, a few options out there, but uh, nothing that's definitively the best or all encompassing yet. Next up, Jared asks, if you're able to strike a deal for that patch of land, what will you do with it? Uh, so this is a reference to a tweet that I made about making an offer on some land. We're actually gonna be trying to build a house on it. So that's all it's for, just our new home. Uh, it's gonna be custom built or we expect that it will be. And it's gonna have kind of a separate office area so that it can be a bit more secluded from the kids. I don't have to worry about asking them to be quiet when I click the record button. Coalition's got a totally not weird question. Would you rather fight one Zax Tech Turf sized duck or 100 duck sized Zacks? Probably 100 duck sized Zacks. I feel like, I feel like that's a lot less intimidating. Jace asks, what do you think is the hardest troubleshooting process step? I think when it gets down to the motherboard and CPU, that's when it's the most annoying and probably the most, I don't know, there's nothing really difficult about troubleshooting hardware. It's just uh, the amount of time that you're willing to devote to it. Uh, it's rather straightforward actually, and a bit redundant in that regard. But uh, once you get down to the platform, it just gets annoying. You've got to remove everything else to take out the motherboard, swap the motherboard out, swap the CPU out. By that point, you're just like scorched earth mentality. Try everything because, well, you might as well. You've already completely taken apart the system. Next up, you Brainiac. Ever thought of developing a PC hardware product or product line either on your own or as a collaboration with a company? This is a really cool one. Uh, kind of like my friend Der Bauer who teamed up with Lee and Lee and made a case uh, and has his, his logo, his name on that case. That's really cool. I mean, him being able to stamp his approval on a case like that and have it perform so well in the market and be loved by so many. And that's just, that's a huge accomplishment for him. I'm really happy for Roman. But uh, I would like to do something similar to that at some point, if possible. I don't know if I'd want it to be a PC case. I mean, maybe. But some kind of product similar to how Lee and Lee and Der Bauer have teamed up, I think that would just be so cool. Next up, Terror Tech, why are you the way you are? Oh, I don't know. Known by a few, I have a PC with a Ryzen 5 2600 and B450 motherboard, and I have this issue where my screen randomly freezes and two seconds later it turns off and then the CPU debug LED on the motherboard turns on. I always have to hard restart it to make it work again. What do I do? Uh, well, if your CPU debug LED is on or turning on, I'd say it's probably your CPU. Uh, but look, in all seriousness, the debug LEDs are super helpful. It'll kind of point you in the right direction as to what is at fault. It's kind of weird that your CPU would randomly do that. I would revert back to stock settings. If you have any overclocks running, any XMP profiles, run all that at stock, at, at base frequencies and see if that issue persists. If it doesn't, then it was likely just your CPU struggling to keep up with the frequency at whatever set voltage you have. Nosyless, if you could get a remastered or remake of any game for PC, what game do you choose and why? I am so glad you asked this question because I have been dying for a remastered or modern version of Sim Golf. Okay, I, I grew up playing Sim Golf like a boss, okay? I had just the, the most beautiful, challenging courses out there. My, my golfers loved it, okay? And I was making bank, I was making stacks. But you know what? That game is old and it doesn't even run on Windows 10. Probably does through some emulator I'm not aware of, but I've tried to make it work on Windows 10 and it just doesn't, it just doesn't happen. So uh, a remastered or remake of that game would just be, Pinky Tech asks, if you weren't doing YouTube, what would you be doing? Uh, this is a question I already answered. I'd probably just be using my bachelor's degree in engineering. Next question, do you play any games competitively? Uh, no, I don't. I'm not really like super good at any game, pretty much. It's just, yeah, that's how it is. What's your favorite Death Grips album? Uh, should I know who this band is? Yeah, sorry, I just looked them up. I have no idea who they are. Next up, Adam, have you or do you plan to upgrade your main PC to Windows 11? I guess a lot of you are interested in Windows 11. Uh, no, not anytime soon. I just don't really care. It works fine the way it is. Uh, how to make money? It's the question we all want an easy answer to. I love this question from Dad. Will you ever get into the world of 3D printing? Also, are you a European, Asian, American car guy? So I have actually 3D printed things on the channel before. I'm not sure if many of you noticed, but uh, I'm just, I, the printer I had was super cheap and it drove me crazy trying to get that thing leveled all the time. So I didn't really, um, I didn't really continue it the way that I thought I was going to. And then for the European, Asian, American car guy thing, um, I think it's 
pretty self-explanatory. And the next question, coincidentally, has to do with cars as well. Naturally aspirated or boosted and why? So if you look at these previous cars here, so the Ferrari is a very high winding V8 engine, very loud, screams, flat plane crank. I love it. Revs to 8,500 RPM, and that's where you get most of your power, way up there in the rev range. But uh, the 911 here, this is a 991.2, so it is a flat six twin turbocharged engine that sits right over the rear axle, and it just gets grip for days right off the line. I have tuned it. Um, it's not stage two yet, although there are a few things coming that will allow me to stage two it. But uh, it, it's, I mean, zero to 60 in just over three seconds, it would demolish the Ferrari. I'd say if I had to pick, naturally aspirated. It's Even though you don't usually get the same kinds of just thrill that you get out of a tune car that has a, a really, really wide torque band or something like that. There's just something special about high revving V8s. I'm gonna miss these. And last here, it's kind of weird how all the car tweets are at the bottom, but uh, Toronto asked, we need a garage tour. Do you like driving the Porsche or Ferrari more? This kind of ties on what I just said. Um, the Ferrari is the more fun car to drive, I would say. Just the, the sound, the fact that it's convertible, and it's it's a Ferrari, right? I mean, it's a cheap Ferrari, relatively speaking, but it's still a Ferrari. It's not very fast, but, um, you know, everything about it, I, I love. It drives like a go-kart. It's got a very mechanical feeling steering wheel. It it shifts really nice, considering it's, it's not a manual. I wish it was, but it still has a really nice, satisfying shift with the paddles because it's, it's essentially an auto manual. So it's got a manual transmission with a mechanical arm that shifts for you. So it behaves like a manual on the roads. It'll roll backward if you're at a stop and you're in gear, you know, stuff like that. Um, the Porsche is just, if you want to zoom down the freeway, if you just want to go fast, you take the Porsche, it's just, it, the thing's a bullet. So that is it for this video. We have answered every single question. I think there was like one exception. It was like a five-parter and I, I just, yeah, it, it requires its own attention. But uh, I appreciate all of those who submitted questions. And if you are not following me and you wanna be a part of these videos in the future, be sure to follow me at Greg Salazar YT. We'll have more of these in the future. And uh, yeah, I'll do my best to go through all of them just like we have here. If you're not subscribed, I'd appreciate it if you got subscribed. Join the public Discord server if you haven't already. There's plenty of folks over there who are willing to help you out if you have an issue. And uh, yeah, like the video, leave a comment. I'll catch you in the next one. My name is Greg. Thanks for learning with me.